Okay, yes, thank you, Mark, for, for having me and giving me the chance to tell a bit about the uh, technology behind our phenotyping uh, platform. Uh, and um, yeah, before I um, come to the technology itself, um, it might be interesting to, to, to say a few words about the company Lambda Tech it, itself. A quite young company founded uh, 13 years ago in Aachen as a spin-off of the university. So the uh, the core, core competence of the uh, of Lemna Tech is image processing software and hardware, the development of a complete integrated system to scan <coughs> biological samples, digitize them, and then analyze these images uh, to measure visible parameters like color, shape, size, architecture, all these things which are usually uh, somehow scored or measured or quantified uh, manually by eye to somehow describe the performance of the plant in correlation to certain treatments or uh, in correlation to, to, to some genomic data, um, which of course, at, if we look at the throughput of genomic sequencing data, is hard to, to, uh, to meet uh, with this manual way. Uh, yeah, as you can imagine, we have not so many biologists in the company, so it's more engineering and, and uh, yeah, hardware engineering and software engineering company. However, we work very multidisciplinary, uh, and I think that's one of the big advantages so that you uh, really have all the competences under one roof. Yeah, coming back to the visual measurement of things, even if it comes to very easy things like counting, the human eye might not be the most appropriate uh, uh, tool to, to measure these kind of visible parameters. So you can see with this uh, funny image of an elephant because the, the human eye or the neural network behind it always tends to compare known patterns and that might mislead or might lead to, 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 to wrong results. That's the reason why you can't really count the, the, the elephant's leg. And there are other things uh, in the human eye uh, which makes it hard uh, to, to really quantify visual parameters. Um, this is a very funny thing. Uh, if you concentrate on one of the white dots in the intersection, you will see black dots popping up in the other intersections arbitrarily. And you can't count them because that's a very arbitrary mechanism. And that's not a computer fake. It will work the same if you print it out on the wall. Uh, and you can check that if you just concentrate on either white dot, the one you concentrate on, that will stay white, and the other one will get black dots in it. And that's actually something which is used in JPEG compression to make images look nice um, to the human eye. Uh, another very important thing if it comes to, to scoring visible parameters on plants is uh, areas, um, like disease areas on plants. Uh, people usually want to somehow measure the amount of disease which show up in a different color. And uh, since uh, we tend to compare objects to neighboring objects, uh, we are somehow biased by, by the objects around it. And that's the reason why you would think that the uh, that the left inner circle is uh, much bigger than the, than the right one, though they're exactly the same size. And if I fade away the surroundings, uh, you will immediately see that. So that's a very funny thing as well. And then last but not least, one of the most important parameters I already mentioned is color, uh, because the, the different diseases in, in plants show up in different colors. And color is a very complex parameter because it's a three-dimensional, uh, it's a three-dimensional vector and not a scalar size, um, uh, and, and that makes it hard to quantify by eye. Uh, a nice example is if you look at the three brown tiles in the, on the left cube, you would see, uh, see that the center one is much brighter than, uh, or has another uh, brown color than the other one. But in fact, if I fade away all the surroundings, you see that they're exactly the same color. And again, that's not a computer fake, it's really that they have the same color. Um, and so you see that uh, estimating color or measuring colors uh, is something where the human eye is uh, not really the, uh, the most appropriate uh, tool to do this, especially if it comes to reproducibility of the data and, and um, yeah, safety of the data. Yeah, that's why we uh, developed the 3D phenotyping platform, and this uh, nice movie shows, shows the installation at the IPK in Gathersleben. The system comes with the so-called moving field, 
Well, that's actually a conveyable system which holds the plant and moves the plant around in the greenhouse 24 7. And by that, it's standardizing the growth conditions because it avoids hot spots. So you really have a nice standardized growth condition for all plants, not depending on their position in the greenhouse. All the logistics is done automatically. Uh, plants are identified by RFID chips, which is a very reliable technique in the greenhouse because barcodes tend to get dirty with all this uh, soil and stuff. And then the system moves the plants into the scanning cabinets. Uh, where they're separated from each other so that you have a high density in the greenhouse but here you just look at single plants. Uh, they are lifted from the conveyor belt and we have a side camera, that's the actual view from the side camera and the top camera and then uh, plants are digitized and vectorized and all the visible parameters are, are measured and, and going to the database so you have a really vectorization of that plant uh, in terms of uh, node distances, colors, shape, size, architecture plant is then rotated to have a real uh, uh, scan from, from various sides, usually it's just 0 and 90 degrees, but you can have more, and an additional top camera completes the three-dimensional measurement setup. This is the typical setup we have for all sorts of camera. We not, not only provide visible light cameras for the appearance of the plants, but we have uh, other wavelengths, uh, like the next chamber is the near-infrared chamber. Uh, where we illuminate with uh, long-wave near-infrared light. And what we actually measure is the absorption of the near-infrared light by the water in the plant. And by that, we actually measure the, the water distribution, and you, if you do it over time, the water dynamics in the plant, which is very interesting for drought stress experiments or other uh, water use efficiency correlated experiments. All these uh, cabinets are also with the same three-dimensional setup with top cameras and side cameras and rotating device. And another chamber is the fluorescent chamber where we illuminate with uh, blue light or UV light and measure the excitation of chlorophyll of other fluorescent markers like uh, GFP or EGFP or anything which somehow shows a fluorescent signal by being excited. All the data then goes into the database, into the central database, where it's uh, correlated with your experimental data or genomic data, so that you have a complete uh, SQL database with, with all the phenomic um, and genomic data available. System can additionally be equipped with uh, watering and weight stations, so that you can ind individually water the, uh, uh, the plants to certain drought plants. And uh, we also provide spraying stations for pest management in the greenhouse. So it's really a, a complete, uh, reliable system, and meanwhile, all major crops and vegetables are supported within the image processing algorithms and, and uh, yeah, treatments. So yeah, that was a, a short uh, movie about uh, this, um, this system, which uh, gives a good impression and which can also be seen uh, on our website. Uh, I would like just to browse through the uh, the different um, applications uh, a bit more in detail. Uh, that's just a nice image. Um, so as I said, uh, the, the core imaging geometry is that uh, uh, a configuration that you have a top camera and a side camera and the rotating device so that you have a real three-dimensional assessment from all sides and, and not just a, uh, just a top image or a side image, because in the end, the plant, of course, is a three-dimensional object, and, and, and uh, you want to have the complete data available. Uh, and on top of that, we, we provide different wavelengths. In the movie, you just saw uh, three of them, the, the visible light scan, the near-infrared scan, and the fluorescent scan. But we also uh, provide in, uh, infrared scans, which actually measure the temperature of the plants. That's interesting for temperature-correlated experiment, like closing of the stomata or other things which might be temperature correlated. And we also provide non-destructive root scanners in, in uh, root columns, transparent root columns. These are mainly used with near-infrared scanners and uh, visible light scanner, the visible light to measure the architecture of the root uh, and the infrared uh, to measure the root activity, the water distribution in the root column. Yeah, that's the, the, the visible light scanning. It's just an example with a corn plant. Uh, so all sorts of geometric parameters like center of gravity and, 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 and architectural parameters are uh, um, uh, quantified and uh, uh, correlated to the top image so that you kind of have a, a three-dimensional overview of the plant. The color, as already mentioned, that's 
kind of a key, uh, um, uh, yeah, the, the, the key sensor for, for plant uh, health because all these diseases show up in different colors. Uh, so the area of different colors uh, gives you a very uh, nice um, uh, quantification of the uh, healthy state of the plant. Uh, 